Well, hello everybody and welcome to another Build Your AutoCAD IQ Beyond the Basics. Working with fields today with Volker and myself. And again, Naman will be answering questions in the questions menu. So today, you're joined by us three. Volker will be leading this one. I will be moderating with Naman answering your questions as we can. So right now Volker's gonna throw up some polls and we'll get this one started. All right, so this first poll, um, and we do this all the time, so many of you may already uh, have gone through this numerous times or at least one time, but is this your first Autodesk Help webinar? We're always curious to know how many of you are new, how many of our returning attendees. We always like to see people coming back. That's always a great thing for us. Uh, and it's always great to have new attendees. And hopefully this session will be worth something for you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close this poll now because we have about 9% uh, who are new. And we have, um, well, that would make it about 91% who are returning. We're glad to see you guys back. And thanks for joining us for the first time. I've got one more for right now. And uh, this is just to kind of gauge, um, well, I think the uh, poll sums it up. What AutoCAD-based application do you use? Uh, is it AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT, one of the verticals, or another application, uh, maybe not even AutoCAD? Uh, related. Um, keep in mind this this webinar, keep in mind, maybe I should just point out that this webinar is tailored to the AutoCAD LT audience. Um, anything you can do in AutoCAD LT, you can do in AutoCAD or the verticals. So um, we do try to keep everything tapered, tailored to LT. If for some chance uh, something is not available in LT, uh, we would let you know. So um, heads up on that. So it looks like, um, I'll go ahead and share this. Looks like we have about 33% of you who use AutoCAD, 27% using AutoCAD LT. So that's half our audience right there. And then 40% using the verti vertical. So um, thanks for that input. We really do appreciate it. It does make life easier for us. And it allows us to present you with um, new offerings as far as webinars go. Well, thanks for that, Volker. It looks like a pretty good split for users with AutoCAD LT and some of the verticals. Um, so upcoming events. The... Uh, October 6th webinar will be on the third dimension. Uh, we're going to go through model documentation in AutoCAD 2017. That will be with Alex and Victoria. Tips and tricks with Dave and I think it's Ashley. But I think this week Michael is going to be doing an introduction to Civil 3D. So uh, look forward to, to October 13th if you're interested in that vertical. We'll go back to basics with Zach, and he'll do an introduction to external X references, and then Volker and I will round out October with working with data extraction. So get really excited about that one because we're pumped. So the other thing that we really wanted to make sure you guys understand and, and know about is the AutoCAD Customer Council. This is an opportunity for you guys to join betas uh, and to influence the flow and development of AutoCAD through input and testing. So keep that in mind. Um, if you're interested, these are the emails to join, I think is how it works, yes. And then also uh, the community forums are a great page to get questions answered. We have the highest, I think, solution rate on the AutoCAD forums uh, to anywhere else. And it, I think next month we'll have another AutoCAD answer day, uh, Autodesk AutoCAD answer day. We'll be doing AutoCAD on that day, so it doesn't really matter. So 
Yes, yeah, so I, I just want to interrupt you on that one, Ryan. Um, we don't have a slide up for the answer day. Uh, it is going to take place on the 27th of October. Coincidentally, that's uh, when we hold our webinar. So the webinar, I'm not sure yet, it may be postponed for a week. But the bottom line is the answer day is a very cool thing. If you have questions about anything, sales, technical support, which products to use, uh, this event is a 12-hour uh, long event where our product group gets involved, our salespeople get involved, our customer care people get involved, technical support gets involved to answer as many questions as possible um, for you, the end user. So, uh, and we'll answer just about anything. Uh, we can't tell you who's going to win the Super Bowl, but we'll try. Okay. Um, anyway. Look forward to uh, more information on that with our next webinar. And the last point on that too is uh, it's not just AutoCAD, although from Volker and I's perspective that's what we'll be mainly doing. I will be joining the Plant 3D forums and P&ID forums on Answer Day and we'll have some in Civil, Map, uh, I think Architecture and some of the other verticals as well. So keep that on your calendars. So just a reminder, the sessions are being recorded. Um, we'll go ahead and make sure that those are distributed appropriately through Box and on YouTube. Um, and again, the links will be made available at the end. Just keep in mind to answer your, ask your questions, and Naman and myself will do our best guess at answering them. And any questions we don't get to, we'll have Volker chime in at the end. And also, you should be receiving the reminder message that you can kind of see right on the uh, the right hand side there. If you're not, probably send an email to the Autodesk Help.webinars uh, email and we'll make sure to get you on there. Um, and the last little bit here, just a couple of the top articles we have. Uh, one that Volker and I would like to point out, how to repair corrupt AutoCAD files. We get that question a fair amount, and so it's a good idea to go on and search that one in case you ever run into that problem. Um, there's a lengthy article on how to fix and repair corrupt files from procedures and backups to moving it out. And then a hot fix for 2017 for the Exchange app autoloader. Uh, a reset to defaults did not reset that, and this hot fix should fix that problem. So from here, I'm going to transfer to Volker, and he can fill you in on fields. All right. Thank you, Ryan. And thanks again, everybody, for being here. Uh, today's agenda is going to be uh, working with fields in AutoCAD 2017. And when I say AutoCAD, it could be AutoCAD LT and all the verticals. So just want to get that out of the way real quick. So. What are fields? You know, other than wheat or corn with crazy crop circles, um, we have fields in AutoCAD, and we'll talk about those in this session. Um, we'll also talk about where you can find the command and what settings you should be aware of. And we're going to do a short demo as well, um, and that's going to include how you can use fields with document information, uh, getting that data into your drawing, linking your drawing using a field to another portion of the drawing, and how to use fields um, or how fields can be used with block attributes, uh, either static blocks or dynamic blocks. All right, and as far as what are fields, okay, well, first of all, We'll just backtrack because let you know these were introduced in AutoCAD 2005 and they're an enhancement to both the text uh, information in our drawing as well as the attribute text in information in our drawing. A field, it just ha contains a code that we can plug into um, uh, I lost my train of thought. It basically is just coding that allows me to um, display information in the drawing depending on 
what information I want. Uh, you'll see there's quite a bit, anything from uh, what date the drawing was saved, what printer I'm using, what system variable is uh, displaying what value. Uh, and this is information that you know may change through the life cycle of the project. So it automatically updates as uh, the information changes. Uh, you know, I say automatic, sometimes you have to do a regen to display that information. We'll talk more about that later. Um, when fields are updated and the la latest data is displayed, it could be the data you want to see, but at times you may see something like hyphens or the hash mark symbol. Okay, and basically all that's telling you is those hyphens are displaying that no data is available, you haven't uh, um, applied anything, any kind of um, link to any data, so it can't give you any data. Uh, an invalid field will display these hash marks, and uh, you may see that uh, when you are working with these, so be aware of those. So we can insert fields just about anywhere in the drawing, in a, in a text, um, uh, object, mText, single line text, in attributes, uh, in, and tables. So uh, very, very functional, these fields. If necessary, you can insert a field also quickly from the shortcut menu. So that's a quick shortcut. I'm not sure why I had that line on my PowerPoint because I'll be talking more about that in the next slide. And um, just quickly to, to backtrack, and we're good with this slide, um, fields, you've probably noticed them in documents such as uh, Microsoft Word uses fields for dates that will automatically update. Uh, page numbers, okay? So just to kind of give you an idea of, of where else fields are used, it's not just an AutoCAD thing. It's an Office thing as well uh, and are probably available in other Office type applications, but I um, uh, only use the Office once, Microsoft Office, so I can tell you that. Anyway, the field command, easy to find. You can type field, okay? Um, in you can use the insert tab on the ribbon with the data panel and there you have field and also a button to update the fields and basically the button to update fields is to regenerate those fields uh, to update them. We also have a right click menu. It may look a little different depending on your application whether you're in the M text editor or single line text or in attributes. So different um, uh, context menus for different objects. Hey, we Walter, can, can yes. I, uh, just uh, interrupt you. Um, I, I think uh, people are saying that you are uh, having a field day because you were going to talk about tables that was in the email. So I think the email topic was incorrect. We are going to, tables was last week, not this week. And I, uh, <laughs> oh, so I am so. Moment. <laughs> yeah. So, Naman, thank, thanks for pointing that out. And um, everybody, I, I hate to do this to you. We're going to have to table that webinar uh, just because it was held last week. I'm not sure why the uh, updates were not updated with this week's um, session. Um, all I can do is grovel. So, I. Um, Sincerely apologize for that. We'll make sure that it doesn't happen again in the future. Um, as it is, even if everybody leaves right now, I'm going to continue on with fields. But thanks for pointing that out, Naman. All right, automatically um, updating the fields. Uh, there are some default settings. I'll show you again in the options dialog in a moment, but anytime you regenerate the drawing, fields are going to update. And that happens with the open command, the save command, anytime you plot or e-transmit, or just use the regen or regen all command. 
So if your field has not updated and you're done for the end of the day, you know, at the end of the day, don't worry about it. Just save the drawing, close it. The next time you open it up, it's going to regenerate. Or if you send it to the plotter, it's going to regenerate. And um, you'll see an example of um, a field not updating as we move along. So that said, I'm going to go ahead and display my AutoCAD. Oops. And yeah, technical difficulties here. Sorry. And almost there. There we go. All right. And we should have everything on the screen now. All right. So in uh, this particular, um, first of all, start off with just our drawing, our title block here. And we'll take a look real quick. I'm going to go right mouse click over the command line, and I'm going to go into options. You can type options, many other places to get options. But under uh, user preferences tab, Here's where we can get to that uh, fields command uh, settings. All right. First of all, display background of fields. That's a little, uh, it's like a dark shadowy area, like a text mask almost, around your field. This background does not plot, and you can turn it off. I'd recommend against turning it off, though, uh, because... Um, it helps you distinguish whether it's a field object or a text object in your drawing. Selecting the field update settings, here's where you can say, look, I don't want this thing to update uh, the fields every time I open the drawing or e-transmit it. So uh, you have some ch choice there as far as what you would like to, um, to um, cause a regen of those fields. So just quickly wanted to show you that. Now, let's talk about this title block. A lot of times we have to fill out the same information in a drawing. Um, you know, who's the current drafter or the designer of that drawing, what the title is of that drawing, file size maybe, uh, the subject of the drawing, the file name, et cetera. And many others. And this is just a simple demo title box. So some of these, you know, in many cases may not be valid. But um, we can create attributes, right? If you're familiar with those, we can create those to automatically prompt the user to um, uh, change the information once uh, they've inserted that block into a drawing. But why not let AutoCAD do the work for you? Now, there is some setup involved here, okay? So I'm going to switch over to my file manager real quick. And what I'm going to do is just select uh, an arbitrary file. Let's go ahead and select parcel start here that I have. And these files will be available for you. But by selecting this and going into properties, we have what are called document properties. In, uh, or in the case of AutoCAD, it's drawing properties. And you're probably familiar with this, all the general, how, you know, what type of file is it, uh, what op opens that file, when it was created, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and we could even fill in some summary information, title, subject, author, keywords, et cetera. Uh, it'll tell you how long it's been modified, when it was created. We can add custom values here. Um, uh, uh, something like company name, perhaps, and apply that as a value. Um, so this is stuff that's available with any document on the um, on the Windows um, uh, operating system, and the Mac system also has uh, a similar functionality. Um, if I go back to AutoCAD here, whoops, wrong drawing, and we go to the application browser menu, and we go to drawing 
utilities, we have a command called DWG props, drawing properties. Um, and I should clarify, it's not available in the Mac version. Uh, so this does not apply to the Mac. And if we take a look at this, I've actually gone ahead and placed some information in here. So the title is fields, the subject, example drawing for fields, the author is me, um, and some keywords if I were searching for this on the hard drive, and some comments. I've also put in a custom field, the company name. And that all applies to this particular drawing. So that would be the setup that we need to think about. Once I've done that, though, I can go ahead and use the field command. And for right now, uh, let's go to the insert. I'll do this one time. I typically do stuff from the command prompt. But uh, we'll go over here to field. And we'll take a look at this field dialog here. We can take that document, uh, the DWG props or document properties, and populate this title block using this field command. Uh, first of all, when you first see this, when you first go into this dialog, everything's kind of bunched together here, all the values that we can choose from. At the bottom, you'll see a diesel expression. Diesel is a pr uh, macro language used in AutoCAD LT and vertical applications. And then over here, some formatting options, depending on what type of um, uh, field we want to insert, you're going to have different formatting options available. To make it easier, to simplify things, we can choose to um, select a category. So for example, to insert date and type timestamps, um, a create date, regular date, plot date, and the save date option are all available here. We could change to that category. We also have a document section. And this is where our DWG properties come in handy. And we'll take a look at all this in a moment. We also have a linked section so we can create hyperlink fields. We'll do an example of that. An object category. Uh, so uh, selecting maybe I want to display the name of a block. And we will do that as well. We can also choose to display the value of a diesel expression, which is what this is, or a Lisp, auto Lisp variable. Of course, that's only um, available in AutoCAD and verticals, not AutoCAD LT, since Lisp does not work with LT. But we can display the value of any given system variable in AutoCAD. So some cool stuff there. Also, plot information, scale factors for viewport, uh, page setup names, plotter names, uh, plot scale, and more. And then there is information specific to sheet sets. If you want to add custom properties to your sheet sets, if you use those, here is where you would um, select the sheet set field property that, that you'd like to display. So we'll get right back to this here in a moment because we're going to modify this title block real quick and I could place the fields right here but I want them to be a part of that title block so I'm just going to go ahead and select the block and I'll go into the block editor by right mouse clicking and selecting block editor and then I'm going to go ahead and choose that field command again and this time I typed it in and what I want is, of course, document properties right now. I have designer here, title, file size, etc. And the designer would be the author in my DWG properties. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that. And I'll use some um, all uppercase just for grins. Click OK. And I'm going to go ahead and plop that in this... Um, portion of the title block. I'll repeat. I just hit enter to repeat the command. And I'm going to go ahead and add 
the uh, title. And just for grins, let's do this first capital. Click OK. Maybe I did not select that. Oh, I think because the title is all in caps. So my, my bad. All right, I'm going to repeat that. Let's go ahead and put in a file size. And we can choose kilobytes or megabytes. All right, I'm going to choose kilobytes. Just um, you'll see why here in a moment. I'll click OK. Now plop that one in here as well. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to double click this. This allows me to append the uh, text with, say, KB for kilobytes. So I can add additional information to this field. I'll right click again and I'm going to go ahead and choose field and we have a subject field here so we'll plop that guy in too. Let's do first capital again. Plop that in there. Okay, one more example and this one here you need to think about this one. This is for the file name. And you'll see we have more formatting options here. Um, so format, uppercase, lowercase, uh, first capital, whatever you want to choose. I'll, I'll go ahead and use uppercase. But it has the file name up here, which is quite lengthy, depending on where you store the file. So it allows us to choose for file name only, path only, path and file name. Path and file name is the default. Um, your title block area is only so large, so think about whether or not you want to put in that path. Personally, um, in a case like this, I probably wouldn't want to do that. Maybe as a plot stamp of some type on a no plot layer, that would be a, a good thing to do, but not my title block. So I'm just going to go file name only. And for that matter, I know it's an AutoCAD drawing, so I don't need to display the file extension. Or maybe I do. I'm not going to. All right. I, I know it's an AutoCAD drawing. So I'm going to click OK, and I'll go ahead and plop that guy in here as well. All right. Now let's go ahead and close the block editor, save changes to that title block, and voila. Now anytime I insert this title block, it being saved into another drawing, as long as those properties are saved in that particular drawing, and you can set that up in your template, by the way, under DWG props, all right, just, just to show you. Again, drawing utilities, drawing properties. Open up your template and then add drawing properties to the template right there. And you can you can predefine a lot of this and have it populate the title block. Anytime the title block is inserted into another drawing, it'll pick up those properties. So those um, that's part of your drawing properties. We're in a layout here. And Maybe some of the information that I'd want to see, and this is, this is not going to be uh, real uh, fancy looking or anything, this next example, but uh, just to kind of show you what other information we can um, add to our title block. Now this could be part of the title block as well. I'm just going to plop it on the paper space bell, and some of it needs to be plopped on that paper space. What I'm going to do is I want to know some information about this layout. So I'm going to go over here to plot and one of the things I'd like to know is uh, the device that I'm using to plot to. Okay, what I put device. And maybe this is on a no plot layer. So um, we'll go ahead and leave it on first capital there. Click OK. And because I am using the DWG to PDF PC3 driver, that is what's being displayed. Had I been using a HP or something else, it would display that. Repeating the field command, 
I'd like to know what the current plot scale is set to. And the plot scale, of course, let me just, um, well, let me plop it in here first. Um, I can use a, it's telling me that the plot scale is set to one to one, which it is, we're in paper space. Um, I could have that displayed differently, depending on what format I want to use here, um, or the scale name, which again is the plot scale. I'm just going to go ahead and plop that in there as well. And where, where does it find this information? Uh, well, you can find it in the Page Setup Manager or in the Plot dialog. Uh, plot dialog. So there's our plot scale, one-to-one. -one. And of course, there's the driver I'm using right here. One more very cool item to show. We often want to uh, display what scale factor this particular object is being drawn at and we can do that using a field as well and um, that plot plot date plot print I'm losing my train of thought here we'll go back to that in a moment because I've totally lost my train of thought on that one um, Anyway, plot scale. We can actually select the viewport, so we need object, that's what we need. I'm going to go ahead and select objects in this case. Sorry about that. And we're going to go ahead and again select object here. Let's go ahead and select object type, which is viewport. Now notice all the different um, um, options or properties that it gives me here for that particular um, uh, object that I selected, which was the viewport. Yeah, plot style, shade spot. So see how long I've done this. Uh, it's been since I've done this. Uh, yeah, I'm going to use custom scale here thought there was a viewport scale, but I may just be missing it right now. I'm going to click OK in a moment, but you'll see it gives me a preview. This is the current scale that that viewport has been set to. Okay, and we'll leave that scale name. Um, I prefer that. Here's the uh, list, or excuse me, diesel statement for that. You know, if you wanted to hand code that. I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and I'll just go ahead and plop that right there. So. Uh, these are things you know you want to check out. See what's available. See how many you can use it in your um, in your AutoCAD drawing. Uh, so that's a nice glossy overview of some of the things we can do with document information in a drawing. There is other information we may want to retrieve out of our drawing, though. Let's take a look over here at another drawing that I have, which is uh, a parcel. Okay. Um, so it's pretty, uh, pretty generic. We have a, a little border here. I'd like to know how many square feet uh, this parcel uh, takes up. And again, we can do this using a field. And we are in the object. So we're going to go ahead and keep it on object. We're going to go ahead and select the polyline here. And the first thing in line is area. But we can also have a display information as to, is that a closed polyline? Um, what's the line type scale? You name it. Any property about that polyline, we can show here. Now, I um, want area. Right now, it's giving me a preview here, which is an, in a decimal format. Uh, I'm going to switch to current unit, so it looks like the drawing is in decimal format, so I'm going to choose architectural here. And that's going to go, or I could use engineering actually, it would be better. And that would show me that it's 105.13 square feet. I can change the precision, that's another option I have here, I'm just going to leave it as is. But I also have additional formatting here. So one. Uh, it's showing me the current 
value in decimal units. It is showing me a preview with the, uh, uh, the units that I chose as a display unit. Shows me what the conversion is for those units. And the suffix that it automatically applies. So I could change that suffix. I could add a prefix, basically whatever text I want. Um, let's just for ad lib here and put in my parcel is something like that, just for grins. I've not done this before. You should never ad lib in front of an audience, which is why I'm glad I'm sitting in front of my computer. All right, we could also add different separators here. We can suppress any leading or trailing zeros, very similar to the dimension dialog. I'm going to go ahead and click OK here. I'll click OK, and voila, there's my field. Let's do one more. I've created a block um, using fields. And what this block does, let's just go into the block editor. It's called the uh, location to block. And basically, uh, it's just a, a little marker, okay? But I've put a field in here. And this field, I'm going to go ahead and select it and double click it. Double click it. <laughs> that doesn't work. You can always right click over it and select attribute. Because it is, it's just an attribute definition. Okay, but in this attribute definition, for a default value, we can insert a field. It's one of the options available from that right mouse click menu. So insert field. And what I did was I selected object again. And having selected this object here, the circle, I told it to select the center point, which is the insertion point of this block. And yeah. And having done that, it is showing me the location of that um, uh, the center point of that circle the way I have it set up. So notice that here it has and this is small on your screen, I'm sure, okay? But right now it's showing the current units, which is fine. And it's got a preview of here. These are my X, Y, and Z coordinates, which the center point right now is at 0, comma 0. Now, I want to show the start point of my parcel or, or a certain um, uh, point on the parcel where I, I want to do all my takeoffs, anything I need to do with that parcel, a reference point, right? And I just needed to show the X and Y. I don't need it to show the Z, so I'm going to uncheck Z, and that gives me 0, comma 0. I can also add additional formatting. I could put a prefix or suffix, just like in the previous dialog uh, for the um, uh, area of the parcel. And I think that's about all I need here. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this because I've already created this. We're going to create one from scratch in a moment. I'm going to close that block editor, discard the changes because I don't need to do anything. I'm going to use the insert command and choose that location block that I have. I don't want to explode it. I do want uh, to give it an insertion point. I'll click OK. I'm going to select this corner right here, note that it changed those values um, from 0, comma 0 to the current location in this drawing um, based on where 0, comma 0 is, the origin is in the drawing. So a great way to create um, a location attribute uh, block, maybe. I, I've used these for uh, telephone, uh, a pull placement, manhole placement, and um, as Ryan pointed out earlier, we're going to be doing a data extraction uh, webinar in a month.
and we could extract this kind of type of information to a table in AutoCAD or an Excel spreadsheet externally. Um, uh, so it's a great way to be able to uh, assign or, or show the location of an object in your drawing. So anyway, I thought that one was pretty cool. Actually, I've used this quite often, so I, I do think it's pretty cool. All right, so let's take a look um, at um, this particular drawing right here of a floor plan. Quick example here. In this drawing, I've got a wall a bo uh, for a building. Can't remember if it's a house or an office or what. I think it's an office. Either way, what I want to do is um, redirect whoever is viewing this that, hey, this circle here, this is the change we may have made in the drawing. And we've added a detail for the wall section, which I have. Here's the paper space um, viewport for that. Okay, so nice little foundation detail there. And what I'm going to do is insert a field, which will take me there. So you may have, you know, 20 layouts in your drawing with different views, each layout having, you know, another 20 views or whatever. And you just want uh, someone to be able to quickly get from one point to another. So in the field category, I'm choosing link. Our option there is hyperlink. And in our link to options, we actually have view of this drawing. So this could be a layout view. It could be a named view in the drawing. No way, I'm going to go ahead and select it. By default, it puts uh, for text to display the name of the layout, in this case, uh, which is a view in AutoCAD. I'm just going to go ahead and call it, um, yeah, we'll call it wall section just to keep it uh, generic. I'll click OK. I'll click OK again. And we'll just go ahead and plop that here. Um, if you have a leader in your drawing that has text at the end, keep in mind you can select any text in the drawing and right mouse click to insert a field. Uh, either way, now that I have this here, I'm going to go ahead and just do a control click and that takes me right to that view. And again, I could have multiple viewports here. Each one would be a unique view for that hyperlink. Uh, dialogue. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I just got the wow factor from somebody in the audience here. So, anyway, one more example, um, and that uh, then we'll go to Q and A on this. Is um, working. Let's go back to the first one here. We have a dynamic block here, and um, I'm going to go ahead and. Yeah, I usually do stuff right in model space instead of making a viewport active. But I'll play with fire right now and work within the viewport. Um, when we select one of these dynamic blocks, this is a sample. Uh, this is, uh, I had to borrow Ryan's car here. Uh, but this is a sample tool palette and um, block for dynamic block. And we know that we can um, show different views of a particular uh, dynamic block. These are all called visibility states. So the one thing that's not showing in, in, in the view itself is um, the fact, you know, what, what kind of vehicle is this? And what am I seeing here? Sedan side, okay, yeah, it's sedan side, but maybe we want something else, uh, maybe a model, make model uh, or brand, whatever whatever information you may want to um, display with that dynamic block. So what I'm going to do is an add an attribute to this, but I'm going to use a field in order to display the information I want from the, uh, based upon the visibility state of the dynamic block. So I'm going to go ahead, I've selected the block, I'm going to go into the block editor, 
And of course, here's our visibility state. Here are the different visibility states available to us. I'm going to um, quickly create an attribute. And for those who aren't familiar, um, I know this isn't about attributes, creating them. Uh, there's plenty of information in the help. We've also done some webinars on this, and we'll probably do some more in the future. Uh, but bear with me, okay? For those who do know attributes, this might be pretty cool. I'm going to type ATTDEF, which takes me into the attribute definition dialog. And um, for tag, I'm going to just put down uh, uh, vehicle, uh, we'll call it VView. Okay, <laughs> just because we can't have spaces. I was going to put vehicle view. That's a long tag, though. I'm not going to put anything in for the prompt because I don't need it to prompt me. Um, what I am going to do is select for default insert field. And for this here, I'm going to go back over to objects. And what we need to do when you're working... Uh, when you're doing something like this, you need to use the block placeholder, okay? And this is only available within the block editor, the block placeholder uh, under our objects. And one of the things that has, uh, one of the uh, properties it has here is type view. And that's that um, visibility um, view, okay? And I will go ahead and leave it on the capitalization it has as a default. I'm going to click OK. Uh, just for grins, I'll place it middle center. Let's go ahead and change my text style. I'll make this a height of 4 inches. should do it. And uh, then we'll go ahead and plop this into the drawing. And let's go ahead and I'll put it on this side of my drop-down list. Not too worried about it. Cool thing about the block editor, we can test this to see if it works. And it does. And it gives me the sports car side. Now, the thing here, pay attention to, is if I switch this to sports car front, it works. But notice that the field does not appear. And that's because we're in a visibility state. So I'm going to close that test block and show you what we um, need to do. Yeah, not sure why I did that again. I've closed the uh, test block. I'm going to select, uh, got the visibility states active up here because we are working with visibility states. I'm going to select the block there's an option up here to make invisible or make visible. By selecting this uh, attribute here, I'm going to select make visible, which makes this object visible in every visibility state. You can also type BV show and uh, select the objects and tell it what, um, what state you want it to be visible in. So I um, must have grabbed the wrong visibility state. Do that again. Or all visibility state. Nah, I don't quite trust my command line today, so I'm going to type BV show. And I'm going to type A for all. There we go. All right. So we've selected that. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually I know it's going to work. So I'm going to close the block editor, save the changes, and select my block. And wait a minute, what's going on here? I've got my drop-down list, but no field is showing. We need to, whenever you're working with attributes, so... Uh, again, not a field thing, but when working with attributes, and if you do decide to throw in a field, um, remember, any time you add a, um, <laughs> that's, that's not me, that's a ghost. All right. Um, you need to synchronize 
your attribute in the drawing to make it appear. If I were to insert a new dynamic block of this car, it would appear, but I'm making a change to the existing block. So uh, the option here is select. I'm going to go ahead and select this block. I'll say yes, and let's go ahead and unlock the viewport here because I can't pan otherwise. All right. And so it shows me uh, the sedan side view. Here's another thing you need to be careful, uh, be aware of. And we, I talked about this at the very beginning. I'm going to change the view back to a sports car. And the sports car worked, but the field did not. Paper space is um, kind of funky about having to regenerate stuff anyway. But certain functions or certain um, uh, field functions will not update automatically due to an environment of, like paper space or if they're embedded in attributes. So you may have to just do a manual regen. So I typed in regen. I could have typed in regen all. And now it displays that factor, uh, that field factor. Um, keep in mind, I mean, I, I can, I'm going to go ahead and change this maybe to um, vehicle uh, truck side, okay? All right, big deal. So I've, I, it hasn't updated. I, I'm too lazy to type regen all right now. I close the drawing, open it up again, and it's going to have regenerated this particular car or a uh, field for the car, I should say, or I can just type in regen all in this case because we're in paper space and it updates it. I think that's about it. I mean, there's a lot more to fields, all right? Uh, we can embed them in a table. Uh, you can um, display things like uh, what's my SysFar set at right now for, um, for uh, maybe pick style or the DWG name, things like that. Very cool stuff, and uh, I think we'll go to Q&A if there's any of that. Brian? Or Naman? Okay. Yeah, we've, we've got some. You want to take it, Naman, or do you want me to? Go ahead and you do it. So the first big question was um, calculations with fields. You didn't cover that here, but is there any way to show if that's possible, or is there a brief explanation you can do with showing calculated fields? Mm. Or is that for a, another webinar? Per, well, it's probably better off for another webinar. I guess I could show you. Um, the um, yeah, I don't I don't really have a good example for a standalone field. You could do say uh, a table. Um, I'll just use everything standard here. Let's do that. Uh, doink. Uh, all right. So we've got a table here where I just plopped in some stuff, and there's. There's only two. Let's go ahead and insert some Should have done this a little different. Table. Yeah, so uh, there, there's all kinds of examples for that. I'm going to go ahead and, um, like I said, just do a quick table here. And if we put some values in here, like uh, 32, 67, and 69, whatever. Uh, so with a, a table, these are all fields. Um, with a table, we can add a sum. Oh, where is it? Under... Okay. 
insert formula sum and we'll go ahead and drag that there we go and so we have a field that calculated the numbers we have there and you can do other calculations I can't think of a good example right now for field calculation and I'm sure there is a way to do it I just I've, not only can I not think of any but come to think of it I have not done any okay so uh, should research that a little bit and maybe drop something off in the form about that so sorry that was a waste of time So it looks like we have a couple other ones. Can fields mine information from other drawings? Uh, for instance, one drawing will have a drawing index that would use the drawing numbers and descriptions for other drawings in a project. I think that's sort of like hyperlinks. So we, we can do that to an extent, but it's best to do this using a sheet set. Okay, because the sheet set has a XML file which ties those drawings together. The problem with linking, for the most part, for example, I can take a uh, table here, insert another table, and I can, um, actually better yet, I could take a block and link the information for that block to a value uh, to a cell in this table using two different fields. That would work well for the first block. But the second block would not work as expected because the instance of that second block has a completely different AutoCAD handle or internal name and because yes the first block works because the name is constant but because we have that link to the first block the second instance of that same block would not give us a value we would see those hash marks because the link would be broken the blocks the same but the internal name for the block in order for the AutoCAD drawing base to um, uh, know what it is to reference it is broken in the link. And one way to circumvent that is to create an Excel spreadsheet that has your drawing index, numbers, descriptions, and then link that to a table using data links, which is probably more appropriate than a field. A data link would allow you to link to specific information external to that specific drawing. And that, I think you can do a data link to somewhere else in there too, but that's a different webinar altogether. Um, for the most part, that you know, that's what our data extraction um, webinar is going to be about. So it is kind of limited as far as linking it to another drawing, um, just because of the fact that AutoCAD needs to keep track of the thing somehow and it's not like an OLE object where we have uh, windows working between the drawings. I can certainly link to different layouts and different views in this drawing which is great but but yeah you're going to be limited on that unless you're using a sheet set and, and fields are, are a uh, besides being a hyperlink are really used for viewing specific data that may not be visible normally and displaying that so that it updates and inserts automatically. All right, so we didn't answer that one either. No, I, I think we did. <laughs> I mean, it, the bottom line is it, it, it's not an easy thing. And um, depending on what you're linking, you're going to have problems. If it's within the same drawing, it's going to work. Yeah, and again, we'll we'll try to talk a little bit more about that when we do data extraction. That'll probably be a tag team between Volker and I. Um, and I come at it from a different perspective with Plan 3D, which is um, data driven. So we'll probably try to handle it a little bit on the the AutoCAD side primarily, and kind of include some features that show you know what why other verticals use a little bit different data. We'll at least mention Civil 3D and and plan 3D in that aspect too. And I think electrical uses some data stuff as well. So keep in mind there are verticals that use a little bit more heavy data uh, 
links and extraction and like Volker said, XML databases as well. So we'll at least cover the AutoCAD portion of it and show how to link Excel spreadsheets and stuff. Yes, we're looking forward to that one. Um, so unfortunately, we're running out of time right now. I imagine there might be some more questions. Um, let's do one quick poll, though, before I forget, before you guys leave. Um, just to kind of see if you learned anything in this um, in this uh, session of our webinar. So, did we learn something new? And we're looking at about um, ninety percent. Let's round it to around ninety percent of you. Um, in these few seconds who have been polled saying yes they learned something new and you know that's awesome uh, we don't want to waste people's time uh, so if you didn't uh, learn anything I I wish we could have shown you something new uh, since you for those of you who did learn something I'm really happy that uh, we did make this worth your while and we hope to do so again in the future. In the meantime, for Ryan, for Naman, for myself, uh, my dog Winter, um, uh, we're going to say um, good day. And we will see you next week. Thanks for attending, everybody. Cheers. Cheers.